Presented by RomulusIT.com, offering remote support for common computer problems. And so how does this play into the, the greater media narrative? So, so you, you know, earlier on we talked about Trump. And in my opinion, uh, you know, watching from the outside, regardless of, of who or whatever you think of him, I thought he was given a hard time right from the start and didn't have a fair go. I know what he said. I know the platform that he was working on, but he was effectively derided from the outset, uh, where to me, he's he's no worse of a candidate than Hillary Clinton in terms of you know, both the narrative of how neither one of them have really done anything wrong and how great and good they could assist people. So, I mean, where do you sort of define that when, well, first of all, would you say that the candidates were sort of on, on equal footing in terms of the narrative that they presented? Or what do you think makes him worse off than someone like Hillary Clinton, who was you know, really the only other mainstream option? Um, well, I think Trump, for instance, you know, like I discussed earlier, in his first real foray into the presidential race back in 2011, uh, demonstrated himself to be uh, openly a conspiracy theorist, um, and and not just you know subtly, not not something that he he was you know just sort of had on the side that didn't want to discuss, but he was more than happy to promote a conspiracy theory every time he got on the air, um, and, and in some of my research on specifically those few months but in between when he uh, first announced he was you know, toying with the run to when he finally announced he wasn't going to, he actually became more of a conspiracy theorist in those three months on the issues. He, he, he kept adapt, uh, adopting more and more wild theories about President Obama, which he continued then to repeat in interviews, um, even though since I had worked with them and uh, debunked them myself over the years, knew that these things, with any modicum of you know research, he would have known they were baseless. Um, and and that was his initial introduction into politics. Uh, and it took him over five years just to admit that he was incorrect. He never apologized for it even then. Um, That's not really his game, no. And is it? <laughs> uh, he, he made various act- well, no, it, no, it never has been. Yes. Um, and, and and he made various outright lies. Uh, and, and and I'm not talking necessarily about lies about where he'd read something online and he believed it by mistake, for instance. Um, but it, it became clear over the years. One of the interviews he gave back in 2011 was that he had investigators on the ground in Hawaii who were discovering amazing things, and it eventually became apparent he made that up in an interview. Uh, I, I forget. I want to say it was with ABC. Um, but he just it uh, made it up out of whole cloth. He never had investigators on the ground. They weren't finding anything. But he said that straight up in an interview, and people continued to ask him to produce whatever this evidence it was. Um, that's the sort of one conspiracy mindset. Um, that, that I think makes makes him unfit to be someone who is going to be in charge you know, of an executive branch. Because I think one of the things you're electing a chief executive to do, and, and really any elected official, is you're electing them to exercise their judgment. Um, because it, it's not just on any particular issue, obviously – People care about the individual issues, but you're trusting them to, you know, make all kinds of decisions every day. And when you have someone who is, you know, a conspiracy theorist who's a denialist, um, who is openly, you know, flagrantly and pathologically dishonest, this is someone whose judgment can never be trusted. So does that differ from Hillary Clinton, though, when you hear about, you know, her claims of landing under sniper fire in Bosnia or the, you know, the, the dubious connections between the Clinton Foundation and the Saudis or, you know, her words that, um, 
uh, you know, sort of dismantling capitalism while she's giving quarter of a million dollar speeches to Goldman Sachs. I mean, to me, they're they're much of a muchness in, in that regard. I, uh, just I think because Hillary Clinton can can put on a face that tends to to show her as more respectable. Um, in, in my terms of, I guess, critical thinking, the way that you present, that they're much of a muchness as far as I see. Well, um, I, I think the uh, I think the example of the, the plane landing sort of actually illustrates the difference between them, um, because for, for one, it, it's uh, I, I'm obviously familiar, but it's the standard example of you know Hillary lying. Um, because obviously it did not happen. Um, but the two big distinctions are, one, the fact that that has to be the, the example we still go back to um, of Hillary's dishonesty means that there aren't other more frequent examples to be able to cite to that are that flagrant. Um, whereas I don't think we have to go any further back than like Monday to find an example <laughs> of Trump doing of something of equal, you know, uh, irrationality. Um, I think, in fact, just was it this morning or yesterday, he claimed that he had proof of uh, some representative lying about his call to uh, um, the, the uh, widow of a soldier who was killed in Niger. And then today the White House admitted, actually, we, did, we have nothing. <laughs> we have no tape of that. Um, so that's the difference, is that, one, Tr- Trump does this kind of thing all the time to the fact that it's possible to even index it all. Two, the, the other difference is that in Hillary's case, um, while she shouldn't have said it to her credit, when it was brought to her attention that she had not done that, she retracted it. The, you know, she, she, I don't remember the specifics of it, but she, she, did, she stopped repeating that story. She apologized you know, in whatever her way was. I don't remember. But she stopped repeating the story. A parallel for this uh, that I think actually fits really closely is uh, during the election last year, during the campaign last year. Uh, Trump at one point told a story about how he remembered on 9 11 a number uh, he, he had seen on TV a number of uh, Middle Eastern people celebrating on their rooftops in New Jersey as the towers collapsed on 9 11 in New York. And it was promptly brought to his attention that never happened at all. Um, and I'm actually, as, as dishonest as I think Trump is, I legitimately think, I legitimately think he remembers this. He has, he has a, a, he has a bad memory. I, I, I actually am willing to trust he has a memory of this. It's a false memory, but nonetheless he remembers this. However, when it was brought to his attention, this never happened. Here's ample news footage and whatnot. This never happened. His response was not to retract it and apologize and you know not repeat it. He continued to insist it was true, um, despite all the evidence suggesting that it had never happened. Um, and that that for, that's I think the difference with him is that he he does not allow evidence to change his mind. So does that mean? Would you go as far to say then? Do you believe that Hillary Clinton is qualified then, if she um, still says a lot of these uh, things that uh, you know that there are similar to there are for Trump? There are just as many sort of Hillary Clinton lies websites that that exist uh, out out on the internet as well that that are backed up by at least audio or video of her saying these things. So um, would she qualify as qualified to you? I don't like Hillary. Um, I think, however, that she is, on on those issues, not that much worse than an awful lot of other politicians are. I, I find her terribly uninspiring. I find her um, very sort of uh, self-interested. I, I have been bothered since the beginning that she carpet-bagged her way into a Senate seat. Um, and which then began her political career. Um, but no, in terms of if Trump is worse, Trump is by all means worse. Any, any whatever the issue is, 
you know, and Hillary has plenty of issues, issue by issue. Trump, whatever her fault is, Trump is 10 times worse than she is. And so how does that play in, uh, I guess, at, at a larger question um, in terms of uh, how this would work? What do you think about the media narrative these days? So I, um, uh, I, I'm not disagreeing with your opinions on Trump. I'm simply saying that I think they get overlooked when Hillary does it. And so to, to further extend that, I think there is an element of truth when Trump says things like fake news or CNN, because every day, every media outlet, I'm constantly read about how, you know, he's on the verge of getting impeached. The Russians are running the White House. Uh, the White House is falling apart internally. Whether or not these these stories are true, it it begs a, a greater question, both of CNN and Fox News in these areas, where they effectively seem to take um, one element of truth and spin that into a much larger story that supports their left-right narrative. So where do people go or determine sort of what is the actual value statement or news in this when even the mainstream media outlets can't seem to even try to provide objective information these days? Uh, anytime you can go back to the source material, like I say in the book, um, you know, going back to source material and looking at what was originally said, uh, finding the original video, uh, finding the original statement, finding the original transcript, um, always the best thing to do. Um, any number of times, you know, uh, context is going to be important, um, and. Uh, in the interests of driving, you know, a 24-hour news cycle, uh, you know, pundits on both sides, you know, will, will get outraged and, uh, you know, drive news stories for hours, um, by, sometimes by taking things out of context. Um, and, some, so, you know, some, sometimes outrage is deserved, sometimes it's not. There, there, there are any number of, as much as I, you know, I'm, I'm very public with my dislike of Trump. There are any number of times I, I look at a story, it's like this. I just want to roll my eyes at this. This, 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 this is a non-starter. You know? This episode is brought to you by Romulus IT, offering fast, affordable remote support for common computer problems, including troubleshooting, health checks, virus removal, and software support. Visit RomulusIT.com to get your computer back on track.